Now, when you say that the current uh, antidepressant treatment is not completely doing the job, do you mean that everybody doesn't respond, or do you mean that most people don't respond enough, or some people don't respond enough? Can you give us an idea of, of what the complaint is that makes us think that we need additional augmentation? Sure. If we set our criteria for as remission, meaning uh, uh, minimum uh, symptoms of uh, depression uh, left over from, an, uh, from a depressive episode, we can only find uh, true remission in around 30% of our patients. And so we have at least 60% of our patients who are either have not responded at all to the antidepressant or have partially responded to the antidepressant. And so those patients have significant symptoms. They have uh, impairment in their function. They are um, depressed or partially depressed, and uh, uh, we would like to be able to help those patients re achieve the remission. So certainly you're thinking, and we'll discuss it in some detail, that th thyroid replacement might be one way of getting a better, uh, better remission rate. Yes, I must emphasize that we're talking about patients who do not have a thyroid dysfunction, but it, the thyroid hormone is used as an augmenter, as an agent that will uh, raise the percentage of patients who uh, will achieve remission uh, with now, the treatment of an antidepressant. Now, this is assuming, of course, that we have the correct diagnosis to start with. Because uh, we know that if the diagnosis was bipolar depression, then we might need a different type of medication to, uh, to get the kind of remission that we need. Well, uh, studies should be conducted on bipolar depression also, but we know clinically that bipolar depression many times behaves differently from the unipolar depression, is more resistant to, to treatment, uh, is more prolonged, more suicidality, but and, and, and uh, we would like to see if uh, with uh, uh, bipolar depression, T3 would help also, but we'd have to make sure that these patients are protected from manic switch and, and other complications that are common in uh, bipolar depression. How about the possibility that uh, many of these patients might have psychological reasons why they're depressed, uh, whether they be uh, circumstantial in their family, losses, or, or psychodynamic reasons? Um, personality problems with issues related to substance abuse. Might those be reasons why somebody is depressed and doesn't have a full response to antidepressants or might not have any response to an antidepressant? The issue of resistance uh, to, to, de to treatment is uh, there's always a, the pseudo-resistance. Are patients simply uh, not misdiagnosed or are they not complying with the treatment? Uh, but once someone is diagnosed with major depression, even if there are personality disorder or elements, um, circumstantial uh, uh, elements in their lives, once they're diagnosed with depression, we would like to treat them for their depression. And they should be responsive. And we again, we should aim to achieve that remission. Well, I, I agree with you. I, I, I might disagree that, um, that the patients might, uh, once we diagnose them as the depression, that there might be some forms of psychotherapy that might be needed in order to, to achieve a, a, a full remission. Yeah, if, once, if, if one can find a stressor or something that is uh, 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 continuously uh, uh, provoking the depression or the depressive symptoms, then certainly that should be addressed in psychotherapy or some form of uh, supportive th psychotherapy or cognitive behavioral therapy. Okay, so now having laid the groundwork, we're looking at this group that that we've treated with antidepressants. Mm -hmm. They're not responding as well as they should. And you and other researchers and, uh, are thinking maybe we can achieve a fuller remission with thyroid hormone. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about it from here? Well, first of all, we have to make sure that the diagnosis is correct. So we use rating scales and uh, a an, uh, clinical interview to make sure that the diagnosis is, in fact, unipolar depression. We'll review the patient's uh, medication history, make sure that the trial was adequate in length and in dose. Uh, we will uh, perform thyroid function uh, tests, simple lab uh, tests that will uh, indicate whether the thyroid function is functional or dysfunctional. If it is dysfunctional, it clearly should be, the patient should then be referred to an endocrinologist to, to uh, treat the hypo or hyperthyroidism. But if the patient is what we call in, in medicine euthyroid, the thyroid function is normal, um, but is still 
uh, depressed after an adequate trial of an antidepressant, then we could uh, consider one of the options is augmentation. I should mention also that other options are switching medication or adding another antidepressant, but augmentation is one of the strategies in treating uh, uh, p p p p p patients who are not uh, responsive to antidepressants. I'm talking with Dr. Rena Cooper, who is uh, on the faculty of the Hebrew University Medical uh, School in Jerusalem, and we're discussing the treatment of depression by augmenting with thyroid hormone. So how do you decide, Dr. Cooper, uh, what kind of a dosage to use, and, and are there dangers in causing uh, thyroid complications or, or other uh, complications by using thyroid hormone to uh, augment the treatment of depression? The thyroid hormone is, as I said, uh, normal uh, hormone that is uh, found in the body. We are definitely not trying to induce a situation of hyperthyroidism, but we are uh, adding thyroid hormone to uh, the, the, the strategy. Um, we would then therefore add a dose that will not cause any uh, hyperthyroidism uh, or clinical hyperthyroidism, but is well within the normal range of the thyroid function. We will also uh, monitor the thyroid function to make sure that we don't induce, both clinically and uh, through lab tests, make sure that we're not inducing a hyperthyroidism. And what dosage is that? Usually anywhere between 20, 25 micrograms to 50 micrograms of thyroid hormone. Beyond that, we are already uh, entering the dosage of that is considered replacement uh, so that it we, we then can uh, ha find more uh, side effects if it, we go beyond the, t the 50 micrograms. Now, you've done some uh, double-blind research in this regard. Uh, can you briefly describe how you set up your, your study to uh, compare the use of thyroid augmentation? Yeah, we, um, we enrolled some around uh, a little more than 100 patients suffering from unipolar depression. Um, and what we did was they all, all patients were treated with uh, an antidepressant uh, from the SSRI group. It was a sertraline. And they were then randomized to receive either the thyroid hormone or the placebo. Uh, patients, both patients and uh, treating physicians were blinded so that no one knew what they were getting. And then their uh, clinical state was monitored throughout the eight-week period of the study. And we found that uh, the patients who received the addition of T3 did better than the patients uh, overall as a group, did better than the, the patients who received the placebo. And did this improvement hold up under a statistical analysis? Absolutely. It was, both, it was significant statistically. So that's, that's very exciting that yeah. you've really demonstrated under certain circumstances the effectiveness of using thyroid augmentation. Um, were there side effects from the use of this um, of the, th of the thyroid ho hormone in, in your study? There are always side effects to both antidepressants and to any treatment we, we give, but we didn't find any uh, more significant uh, side effects in the group of the p that received T3 compared to the placebo. Mm -hmm. So there are side effects in any treatment, even in placebo. Could you determine who was more likely to respond to the thyroid augmentation um, as you looked at your data? Statistically, yes. Clinically, not not yet. I mean, uh, when we examined the thyroid function, the, the test that we did before, prior to the administration of the T3, then statistically, the group of p patients who responded more favorably to the T3 had a lower T3 uh, baseline in their blood tests and a higher or a, a, a more significant change in the TSH uh, throughout the study, but there's n there is no cutoff point of T3 that we can say those patients will respond and the others won't respond. When you say that there was a lower T3 to start, it was still within the normal range? It was still within. All patients had normal thyroid function. And so both the T3 and the TSH was normal mm -hmm. to start with, but in retrospect, the T3 was low normal right. and the TSH was High normal. No change. The change in TSH it was was greater. That was in, in, in as you looked at that. But right. the one pre-existing test was a low T3, but still within the normal range. 